Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And today I have for you Kaiju number eight, chapter 19 review. Now, so the first two pages of the chapter are of Kikaru and Kafka having a conversation about Reno and Ahara. They've noticed that the vital signs of theirs produced by the Defense Force suits have gone dark and Kafka instantly remembers back to the second stage of the Defense Force when um, Kikaru's vital signs had disappeared and he puts two and two together and he comes to the realization that it has to be the Alpha Kaiju or the Humanoid Kaiju who is currently there fucking up Reno and Ahara at the moment. And um, of course, since uh, Kafka has put two and two together, he looks at Kikaru and he tells her to handle things here before he sprints off to confront the Alpha. Of course, this is a flashback, so when we return to the present on page three, Kikaru is fighting side by side with the Defense Force. And that's a pretty dope scene to see because she is managing to hold her own in the field with what I believe is actually their first official mission as recruits, if I'm remembering correctly. But this is short-lived because on page three, she overhears the vice captain Hoshina as he takes his incoming call from the platoon leader. He informs the vice captain that they've encountered Kaiju number eight in zone echo of the southeast area. Now, after that, on page four, you get this dialogue with the vice captain saying how he's going to dispatch the neutralization squad. So I'm like, okay. Who is going to be a part of the neutralization squad? I'm assuming this is going to be like something that we saw, if I can make this comparison, like how we had the division between the Joning and Naruto, but you had a step above the Joning, which was the Anbu Black Ops. And technically, the Anbu Black Ops are Joning, but there is a very big skill gap between a Joning, a regular Joning, and someone who's in the Anbu Black Ops, okay? So lo and behold, we move forward, pages 5 through 8. This is in reference to what I said about the last chapter, chapter 18, with my review. He manages to escape, like, straight up. I knew it was going to happen. There was no way that the mangaka was going to let basically their main villain die off this early in the series. This is only chapter 19, but the fact of the matter still remains that Kafka was able to work this man literally down to his core. For him to say, for him to have enough gall to say, next time I see you, I'm going to kill you now that I know your profile. This, knowing your profile has to be something massive, apparently, because nothing that Alpha did up until this point will make you think that he has the ability to kill Kafka. His little finger pistols don't do anything. When he tries to make more finger pistols, Kafka just blitzes him. So nothing that this Alpha has shown right now makes me think that he is going to actually kill Kafka. The Alpha reminds me of like that little kid that you got into a fight with on the playground and he lost. So what he does is he gets up and he says, next time I see you, I'm going to beat you up. But what he does is he just goes and he brings his older brother to fight you. Like that's what this reminds me of. I I think the Alpha is going to go and get an older brother to handle Kafka because he clearly can't. And keep in mind, up until this point, Kafka has only been boxing him. Like, yeah, we saw him generate the electricity with his spine, which was pretty cool. He did the shout thing. We don't really know what that is. But up until this point, he is literally just handling these kaiju and the alpha with just straight punches. He is one punch man of the Monster Hunter universe. So it is going to be really interesting if he does have an actual electrical ability or just some sort of ability that comes along with this kaiju form. So going back to the review, the human Okaju escapes and all of the confusion that is happening because the camouflage barrier that was in place by, I guess, the human Okaju was destroyed and the defense force is beginning to flood in. So everybody is about to just dip before they're all destroyed. So I was right in that regard. Um, I find it interesting that they really wasn't paying any attention to the other Kaiju at all. So when the platoon leader had radioed in, he didn't mention the other Kaiju Kafka was fighting. He didn't mention the Alpha at all. I find that really weird because they're both humanoid and they're both capable of speech. So I'm curious as to how a trained platoon leader can just gloss over that and not bring it up to the vice captain at all. He only radioed Kafka's description. Keep in mind, these are the only two kaiju around. Is it possible, just like how the Alpha infiltrated the cleaning crew, that he has people on the inside who have also infiltrated the defense force? To everybody watching who also watches One Piece or reads One Piece, the same situation that we had with Virgo infiltrating the marines i would like to think that the alpha has some sort of humor or kaiju that can take on human form inside of the defense force and that would explain how he is able to just come and go into secure facilities like no i don't think i've seen any youtuber who reviews kaiju number eight actually talk about this the alpha infiltrated the defense force headquarters well i don't know if they're the headquarters but they were taking the second stage of the exam at the defense force he just managed to just slide under that radar but that's just my speculation. I have nothing to go off of um, in regards to that. Somebody had to let him in. Somebody had to be away from the computer monitors. I mean, you're talking about cameras everywhere that are there to watch the, the examinees, but none of these trained officers were managed to catch this humanoid kaiju. 
he was also able to escape undetected like they the defense force is only focused on kafka and kaiju number eight why where are the other seven <laughs> i know it's early in the manga but this is this is just me getting my thoughts out this is how i do my reviews it's really just me questioning a lot of stuff and talking about what is happening trying to put two and two together and opening up the floor for y'all um asking questions that maybe you haven't thought about or maybe you find interesting as well it's just a, a way to create dialogue so i'm not being hard on the manga i absolutely love this series it's one of my favorite one, new ones out but I, I do find that rather weird but lastly for this chapter the ending is absolutely pandemonium all right so you remember on page four when the vice captain was like he's going to dispatch the neutralization unit yeah this is some g shit people okay so page eight through 17 we find out that the neutralization unit is one man all right the vice captain hoshina himself is the entire neutralization unit he is squad okay if this isn't the most cockiest shit i have ever read in the manga i don't know what is well actually let me take that back Escanor. Escanor from Seven Deadly Sins is the cockiest motherfucker I know, but Hoshina is top tier, okay? He could have said anything to the platoon leader. He could have been like, I'm on the way. I'll be right there. Go ahead and I'll meet you there. Nope. He had to go the extra damn mile and be like, I'm gonna dispatch the neutralization squad. It's just you. It's only you. What? <laughs> just say you're going. Don't say you're gonna dispatch a, a unit and it's only you unless he, you know what I'm saying? Like, Unless he got there first. That's the only thing I can imagine actually happened. He got there first. Flash forward to page 10. He radios in that he's made contact and Kikaru and Ichikawa overhear this. Let me just get this out the way. These are some loud ass radios, unless everyone has one. Um, <laughs> these are some loud ass speakers. Ichikawa and Kikaru have been overhearing every conversation that has come their way. There's no reason to believe that they don't have radios on their suits as well. So let's keep that in mind. The faces that you see them make tells the entire story, all right? I don't know if everybody knows about Hoshina and his ability other than Kafka, but Kafka is approaching Hoshina when he does finally make contact with him very lightly. He boasts, well, he thinks very highly of his kaiju form. That means nothing to Hoshina because this man goes to absolute town on Kafka. He mentions that he's hit him probably twice in like the flurry of exchanges that have been shown to us. This man is cocky, but he backs up what he has to say. If you go back to page 14, he references that he was never good at dispersing the large kaijus like what we see with the captain mina right she handles large kaijus in one shot but the vice captain seems to specialize in mini kaiju and it, it got me thinking again i was like well damn how strong are mini kaiju for you to need this much strength you know what i mean like there had to have been a threat great enough to push you to get to this point now that you're at as a vice captain role if you're able to hold a vice captain role specifically for you being able to deal with mini kaiju well, that speaks volume. Are you technically stronger than Mina when it comes to mini kaiju? Because you're fast as hell. And you're not even at your full strength right now. Is Mina just like an all-around type of fighter? Like, yeah, she she specializes in the large kaiju or the grande kaiju. Um, but is she just as deadly with the mini ones? Or is she just a, a buffoon? Who really knows? Is he a buffoon with large kaiju? I doubt it. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in these positions. So, two pages out. Page 15, the VC requests permission to surpass his limiter, and the person on the opposite end of the radio is like, sure. And he does this, and, and I read this, and I'm like, the fuck is the point of the limiter? You know what I mean? Because once he unlocked his limiter and went full 92%, nothing really changed. And I know it happened on the very last page, so we're going to see on chapter 20 what he's talking about with this whole limiter, but nothing really happen like what's the point of the limiter y'all y'all aren't taking out entire blocks of cities you know what i mean well maybe mina because when they're toting those pistols or those rifles they have an insane amount of power behind them so i can see why if you use a gun you have a limiter but the vc uses swords why do you have a limiter <laughs> this isn't bleach you know what i'm talking about like in bleach it made sense why um the captains had limiters on their zanpak toes or on their bankais because if they unleashed it in the soul society or in the human world or basically anywhere with life it puts everybody at risk it doesn't make sense why the vice captain has a limiter because he's not putting anyone at risk. There's only two people there. And again, you're the vice captain. Why are you asking permission? The captains of the court guard squad and Bleach weren't the highest power, okay? But the vice captain, other than the captain herself, as far as we know about the structure of the, um, of the system, of the defense force system, they're the two highest powers. You're the vice captain. You don't need to ask anybody. Just do what you got to do. And again, my whole point is there's not a reason for there to be a limiter on if you're not at risk of destroying your comrades, destroying civilians, uh, 
uh, uh, parts of the city. There's no reason for the limiter at all. But instantly, the minute, like I said earlier, his his all out max is 92 percent. Maybe not. Maybe that's just where he wants to start at. Maybe he can go as high as 95 percent or maybe he can do 100 percent. Maybe it's a requirement that the captain and vice captain always be able to draw upon their suits full potential at 100 percent. If you can't, then there's no other way that you can be a captain or a vice captain in a position. But he starts off at 92 percent. It made me think that Mina may be at 100 percent. Um, it also brings into question the other two Defense Force squads because right now Kafka is a part of Defense Force 3. Is there a Defense Force 2? Is there a Defense Force 1? Um, is it one of those situations where the lower you get, the higher in power it goes? Maybe Mina and uh, Hoshina can only max out at 95%, but if you're in Defense Force 2, you can go to 99, and if you're in Defense Force 1, you can go to 100. There's a lot of speculation and a lot of things that need to be covered in this uh, uh this series but i look forward to it 100 percent uh but that is all i have for y'all ladies and gentlemen i want a kaiju discussion around kafka because this man is insanely good with his kaiju form and i'm curious if he has always been nice with the hands or is uh this kaiju taking over in this form and kafka maybe just doesn't know it but i don't really know in that regard I just find that for someone who has only had this kaiju form for three months, he knows how to fight extremely well, and that doesn't seem indicative of being a kaiju cleanup, you know, corpse uh, uh, crew member, right? He has ma basically mastered the kaiju form. Insane speed, clearly able to break the sound barrier. He can punch and reduce somebody down to their absolute core. He can one punch and disintegrate a kaiju that we've seen in the earlier chapters when he first got the kaiju form. He is able to unlock electricity, thunder shouts. Uh, what can't this man Kafka do with this form? It makes me think that the kaiju takes over a little bit of his body and fights for him in, in certain situations, right? I feel like Kafka's running off of muscle memory of the kaiju. It, it, it just seems really weird how insanely good he is to this point to where he's beating down the main villain. And it's like, where where are we going to go from here, right? But I really do look forward to um, checking out and reading the rest of this manga, reviewing this manga. Hopefully this is around for the long run. I don't want this series to get axed. I feel like this has a lot of potential moving forward. But I'm not going to drag this video out any longer than what it needs to be. Like the video if you like the video. Dislike the video if you dislike the video. Comment on the video. Share, subscribe, all that fancy stuff. And until next time, I'm out.